so let's do let's do another example. Let's see if we can look at another example of natural selection in the wild. So you look at these images. Um, I want you to just come up with an explanation for what's going on. So I want you to use this idea of natural selection. I want you to talk about what's the variation, what's the trait that's being inherited, um, and all the other requirements of natural selection. Um, what's the selection pressure? Which organisms are surviving and reproducing at higher rates? And what's the, ad what's the adaptation that has taken hold of this population? So I want you to look through these images and see if we can just write out an explanation come up with an explanation for how this population has changed, this population of beetles has changed over time using the different requirements of natural selection. Once you have done that, I want you to, you know, I want you to think about it, pause, write down your idea, unpause when you're ready to discuss. So you probably have seen that the organism that the population that's changing, of course, are these beetles. And the variation we're looking at is color, right? Some are green, some are red. Right? And we're assuming that, of course, that the color is a genetic trait, it's being passed down, it's inherited. So the red beetles are producing red offspring, green beetles are producing green offspring. And the selection pressure, of course, are these birds. Right? So these birds, because of the, either because of the background, maybe the red ones are camouflaging better than the green ones, or maybe they just have a preference for the taste of green ones. Who knows in this, you know, there's not enough information to deduce here. Um, but the selection pressure are the birds. And so, you know, once they're eating, they're selectively eating the, the green ones. Well, that means the red ones are surviving. And maybe some green ones are also surviving. Um, but we see that the, the this color trait is inherited. So the red ones are mostly producing red offspring and the green ones are mostly producing green offspring. And of course, um, these red ones are surviving and reproducing at a higher rate, differential survival and reproduction than the green ones. And then we see as rounds and rounds of this selective killing of green beetles and uh, surviving and reproducing, then we see that this population has evolved a trait of redness. And so this, this final population of beetles are red, have a higher percentage of red beetles than it did in the initial or the early population. Now let's talk about a second example, a classic example of natural selection. And let's talk about uh, why do giraffes have long necks? So I wanna to present to you first uh, an idea that about how a giraffe had long necks uh, before Charles Darwin came up with the idea of natural selection. Now, the guy that came up with this idea was Lamarck, and um, you can see in this image what he would say is that there was, you know, uh, short-necked ancestors, and as either perhaps uh, a food source got higher and higher out of reach, that individual giraffes would, you know, stretch their necks. Um, to, to keep up with the, the, the food. And they would keep on stretching and stretching and stretching until they had long necks. And the other thing that Lamarck proposed was that now these long neck individuals, because they had this drive, this inner need to stretch their necks, they would pass down um, this trait of having long necks. So that's how we uh, ended up with these long neck giraffes. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to explain to me what's what's wrong with this idea. So we sort of now just think about natural selection, what we've been talking about. What are the things that you have identified as incorrect here? So I want you to pause, think about it, unpause when you're ready to discuss. What I've identified, there are three things that are different between Lamarck and Charles Darwin. Um, the one thing is the unit of change. Um, Lamarck thought the individual could change its traits, right? Where Charles Darwin would say it's the species or the population that changes the, the, the traits. It's not an, an individual doesn't change their traits. They either live or die. They either born with a trait um, and they're successful or they're unsuccessful. The other thing um, that Lamarck got wrong was how things traits were inherited. Lamarck believed that acquired traits. So these traits that are acquired during one's lifetime can be passed down to their offspring. Just as, as a, a giraffe that stretches neck 
could also pass down that trait. And while Charles Darwin didn't know anything about genes, he understood there was this sort of inherent, this, um, there were these traits that organisms were born with, and that's the trait they would pass down. And the last thing was the role of the environment. So Lamarck uh, believed that the, the role of the environment is that it could cause evolution to occur. It can cause change in individuals, just as the, the uh, food source getting higher and higher, that would cause the giraffes to stretch their necks. But Charles Darwin sort of understood this idea of selection pressures that the envir environment either killed, selectively killed organisms or selectively let other organisms survive. So what I want you to do now with this understanding, explain what Charles Darwin would say about um, why giraffes have long necks. Um, use natural selection as your explanation. So I want you to pause, think about it, unpause when you're ready to discuss. What you've probably realized, uh, and there are many explanations that could be possible when using natural selection, but let's just use the simplest one. Use, let's use the food source as the selection pressure. So what Charles Darwin would say, of course, there was variation. So some giraffes had short necks, some had long necks, some had intermediate sized necks. And that neck size was inherited. So long uh, neck giraffes produce long neck offspring and short ones produce short ones, et cetera, et cetera. With these trees growing taller, the selection pressure would be these trees growing taller and giraffes with longer necks would survive at a higher rate than giraffes with shorter necks. And then if the giraffes with long necks were surviving, they reproduce, they produce long neck giraffes. And over time, a greater population of giraffes have longer necks. And that's how the change occurred. So hopefully you get this idea of coming up with uh, explanations using natural selection or what I would call Darwinian explanations, and you'll be able to apply that to other scenarios. Thank you very much. Bye.